It seems like you guys were really enjoying the video about the topology optimized shelf brackets, as you can see behind me. Looking through the comments, there were a lot of people saying that they really love the organic shape and that was why I made these in the first place. But there were also a few questions and misunderstandings that I kind of want to address in this video. Like, why did I not screw the shelf brackets to the studs? Why did I use this design and not one that would have been even stronger? And why did I not screw the shelves to the brackets? Aren't they just going to slide off? All that and more in this one. So before I start answering questions, I kind of want to preface this with why I even made these brackets the way I did and what the goal was with this project. And it was first of all to hold up these shelves. Like that's like that's the obvious practical use for them. And that they definitely do. But I also wanted to explore topology optimization and I wanted to make something that looked beautiful and that was unique and that you just couldn't buy off the shelf. So, you know, if I was just a reasonable person, I would have bought those $3 brackets from Ikea. They would have been stronger. They would have been, you know, way easier, way cheaper to make but that's not what I wanted. And that does lead me into that first question is why did I, you know, design them the way I did? Why did I force the topology optimization algorithm to create these branches and these intricate structures? Wouldn't a solid beam up here and then this cross brace right here, wouldn't that have been better? And yes, it would have been. I, I did explain that in the video. I did have to cut away this surface here from the model that I was giving the topology optimization algorithm so that it would even create these branches up top here in the first place. I specifically generated these. I specifically generated a non-optimal shape because of the way that I wanted these to look. Now, obviously a non-optimal shape means that these could have been stronger. These could have been way stronger if I had designed them differently or if I not have pushed that, that algorithm into that corner. But I just wanted this look. And you know, honestly, these are plenty strong. I can stand on each of these if they wouldn't have pulled out of the wall. These are, you know, the printed part is totally fine. And yes, I did use PLA for the following reasons. Um, well, it's strong and it's easy to print and it's consistent. I've done the Philoween test series where I tested over 50 different filaments from PLAs, ABS, ASA, PTGs, flexibles, all sorts of different filaments. And looking at all the results, PLA has been the filament that was the easiest to work with and the one that consistently got like really good results when it comes to strength. PTG was a bit stronger, but not that much. But considering that this is such a large part and I wanted layer adhesion to be really good, which PTG is also pretty good at, but considering it's such a big part, PTG may have warped. And you know, the thing is with PLA, the, the, the concern that comes up is, but isn't it going to give over time? Isn't it going to sag simply because there's a force on it? The thing with plastic parts sagging over time and giving in over time is something that depends on the usable temperature of your filaments, on your ambient temperature, on how much you load them relative to their failure point. And I think I've got all those things relatively well controlled. You know, this room, this office is air conditioned, so temperature is not going to be a problem. If it were, you know, 30, 35 degrees, maybe I'd be worrying, but it rarely gets over 26, 27 degrees because I'll be sweating in here. And the other thing is relative to what they can handle, these braces aren't loaded all that much. Like again, I know I can stand on these, but I've not broken one of these. So I don't actually know how much they can take but they can easily take over 80 kilograms each. So you could take a 160 kilogram person, you know, that's almost 400 US pounds and lay them on top of each of these shelves. Each one uses two brackets and it would not fail. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. I think these parts are going to be fine in case they do warp or sag over time. I will let you know, but I don't expect that to happen at all. So to sum that up, yes, these parts could have been designed even stronger, but it was totally unnecessary. These are fine for what I need them to do. And you know, if I would have made them stronger, if I would have designed them differently, they would have looked differently. And I like this one much better. And yes, all those points with topology optimization assumes a solid part with no infill, just 100% infill essentially. Uh, yes, that is true. Topology optimization is not meant to design for 3D printed infilled parts. 3D printed parts also have the issue that, you know, there's layer adhesion and there's intra layer strength. And those two make the part anisotropic. So it behaves differently in the Z axis versus the XY plane, which makes it kind of hard to simulate. The thing is though, with infill and shells, with any mechanical part, the outside, the very outside shell takes the majority of the forces and the majority of the stress and the inside doesn't really contribute that much. So I think it's fine just printing these with infill. I think I used 25 or 30%. Um, and again, for what they need to do, they're way strong enough. One of the type of comment that I've seen pop up, I think over 50 times now is, 
you know, this guy designs, you know, a super optimized 3D printed shelf bracket, but doesn't know how to screw things to the studs. Well, thing is, this is not a stud wall. I called it foam concrete, and I think that's pretty close to what it is. Um, you know, the official technical term for what material this wall is, is autoclaved aerated concrete, aka utong is what we have here, or aircrete, or all those other things. This isn't drywall, this is not a stud wall, it's not hollow, in fact it's a massive wall just built out of light concrete tiles. So there are no studs in here, and you can screw stuff to them in pretty much any place you want to. Toggle bolts or other drywall fasteners just are not gonna work in this wall. In fact, the wall plugs that I did use, the Red Tox Tree, which are my go-to wall plugs because they work just for everything, they are rated for 15 kilograms of pullout force in this very type of wall. I think the reason why in the original video that wall plug came out is because it didn't have the screw tightened enough yet. I didn't want to smash the PLA part, but you know, it can take it. I screwed it down a bit more and now these are fine. I think the construction adhesive may help a bit too, but yeah, these are, these are totally fine now. But it's still kind of shocking to see that so many people assumed this was drywall, even though in Germany we don't really have stud walls with just drywall on top. And even in the video I said this was the foam concrete, this wasn't drywall, so yeah, whatever. One more comment that popped up was, lol, this guy totally forgot to secure the shelves to the brackets. And... No, I didn't. In many of the early designs that I showed that I didn't end up using, you can actually see a screw hole right there that would have screwed the shelf itself to the bracket, but I ended up cutting that out. I ended up going for a completely smooth surface here just because it looks better. It would not It would have been pretty ugly to just have that hole right in the front there. Instead, what I did is I used some double-sided tape. This is a 3M tape. This is like a cheap version of their VHB tape, the stuff that I used to stick down GoPros, and this stuff really holds well. In fact, I think it, it holds better than it ever will need to and, you know, these are not coming off, ever. And one last quick question to wrap this up. Why did you have to ruin those beautiful hardwood shelves with that white paint? But here's the thing, the top of these shelves only got a clear coat, so that's still looking pretty nice. And I've already got so many natural hardwood pieces in this apartment, I just didn't want to overdo it. The laminate flooring all has this beach decor, as does the ceiling. My desk is clear coated beach. The doors are natural oak. And now the shelves also have a semi-natural finish. So yeah, I think for now I'm good on natural hardwoods. I still want the space to look like an office or, you know, an apartment. For me it's the same thing. And not like a cabin. So thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next. And yeah, see you around. <laughs>